Welcome to Tom's Tech Show. Today we're connecting PowerShell to MySQL. Welcome to Tom's Tech Show. I'm Tom and uh, today we're going to be connecting PowerShell to MySQL. One of the first steps that you need to do is figure out what version of PowerShell that you have. It's pretty quick and easy. Uh, open PowerShell, type dollar sign PSVer, and then hit the tab key. That's the completion key. There, so hit enter here, and this box has version 2.0. So I want to go with something a little newer. That's going to be kind of the latest from Microsoft. There is a newer beta release candidate uh, that's out in the open source world, but I'm going to use just the Windows Management Framework 5.1, which includes PowerShell. I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to install that, and we'll get right back when I get done installing. Okay, now we've got the PowerShell upgraded, so I can come here and quickly check uh, what my new version is. PS version table here. Now it says 5.1. That's where we want to be um, to get the connector installed. So the next piece that we need to add to this is from MySQL. We need the ADO.NET connector for MySQL. So I have that downloaded. Uh, that we can uh, pretty quickly install. That's not a long install uh, like the uh, Windows Management Framework that takes about 10 minutes to install. So here we have the connector for MySQL. We're going to just do a custom install. Everything's fine. It's not really big, so we install that. So that gets loaded. Okay, now we've got the MySQL connector set and installed. Now we have to go and download from GitHub some files by uh, A.D. Bertram. Um, it's some MySQL libraries uh, that allow us to run the commands and connect everything. I already have those downloaded. Um, so here on their web page you can just you clone or download and I just download a zip file and then we can make them they'll be available. So the MySQL files, there's two files here. Uh, there's a PowerShell data file and a PowerShell script library. So those need to be moved to a folder in program files. So we go to C, program files, down here to Windows PowerShell, then there's a folder called modules. So I need to make a folder here really quickly called MySQL. Open that up and then just take these two files and drop them right in there. So now we have MySQL PowerShell library and framework database there. Okay, before we can run these commands that we need to run, we need to make a change to PowerShell. Um, right now, the uh, there's something called the execution policy. So we can do a get execution policy. That's going to show me it's restricted. So restricted means that I can't run any kind of scripts. So it's a security thing so that people can't, you know, get into your computer, start running PowerShell scripts. Well, we need to change that. So here, if you see, I've run uh, PowerShell as administrator because that's the only way that you can change this setting. So we need to set execution policy to bypass. So this is going to allow me to run those scripts and to be able to connect to my MySQL server. So I'm just going to hit all, say yes to all. Okay, now I have that set. Now I need to import the module MySQL. So it just comes back. If it doesn't show any errors, then it's going to have loaded successfully. Okay, well I have a MySQL server on this computer here. It's actually a uh, XAMPP, which is the, uh, it's just the Apache, PHP, MySQL 
uh, toolkit. I use it a lot just for getting, you know, some quick utility things done. If I need a database, I can load XAMPP uh, and get that running. Okay, well, let's open the control panel and get my MySQL server running. So if I want to connect to it, it's got to be running. Okay. Okay, we can see here that I have the MySQL server running. So let's drop back to PowerShell and we need to do a few things before we can actually connect to the MySQL server. Some of them, one of the things is we need to create a credential that's going to allow us to connect. So we do that first by taking our password and converting that to a secure string, putting it into a variable. Here the command pass equals convert to sure string. The string is password as plain text and force just to force it to be put into the variable. Okay, so my web, my user that I'm using here to connect is web user and that can be just in a regular variable as text. So then to connect, I've done some of these commands before just for the ease of getting everything connected. So the next step is to build that credential. We have the password, it's converted to a secure string and it's in our password variable. We have the user. Now we need to combine those two into a set of credentials. So we take and set my variable cred that I'm using, create a new object. The type that it is, is a system management automation PS credential. And the argument list that we send to it is the username and password. Okay, so now we have the password in the credential. So next we're going to have to connect to our MySQL server. This is actually using the command in the MySQL libraries that we downloaded and installed. So connect MySQL server dash credential. Then we put our credential variable there. The computer name is localhost because that's the MySQL server that's here. It could be remote. Um, then the database that I want to connect to is called test that's on there. Okay, so now we're connected. It shows it didn't come back with an error. We're connected. We have um, everything working here. Okay, so now we can actually write some SQL statements. So select star from users. I have a table inside um, the database test. It's called users. So now we have that stored as a variable. I can invoke. This is another command invoke MySQL query. That's another command that comes with that library. And I invoke that SQL statement. So now it pulls back with to me the names Joe Smith, Mike Andrews, and they're both users. So I can display it on the screen here, but what would probably be more helpful is to store that in a variable. Now I have this data. If I can just type data, it's in a variable. I can also put parameters after that. I want the data and the name. That gives me the two names. If I just want the first name, I can make that use the zero as the first index in the array of names and be able to just bring up the Joe Smith first name. If I want the second name, I use I can use a one, and that'll bring up Mike Andrews the next name. So through this manipulation, I can then pull that data back, manipulate it, run through it in loops. If I want to process all of the data, um, if I want to check, you know, what's going on, you can do different things. Then update the data uh, back and forth with these libraries. Now you know how to connect PowerShell to MySQL. I'll have all the code and links and everything down below. If you want to like and subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. And as always, God bless.